Hello, my name is Dr. Bob DiMaria, and today we're gonna get to know a little bit more about cholesterol. So we're gonna be pursuing learning about cholesterol and what we need to do to help bring it down to normal levels. Let me tell you a little bit about cholesterol. First, it's not a fat, it's an alcohol. A lot of people have misconceptions about what cholesterol is and what it is not. Do you know your number? Do you know your cholesterol number? Well, a lot of people get really concerned if their number is above 200. If it's 225 or 235, well, my concern for you is the fact if your cholesterol is getting above 230 or 240, you're probably eating too much sugar. Cholesterol is not good. Cholesterol is not bad. Cholesterol is beneficial to your body. It's used in every cell in your body. Cholesterol is actually a steroid. So let's slow down a little bit so you can wrap your brain around how is cholesterol really impacting your body. Your body uses cholesterol to make all the other steroids. Now you can say, what's a steroid, Dr. Bob? Well, I'm sure that you understand when people are bodybuilders, they take different types of drugs to help make them their bodies artificially big. Well, the cholesterol is a steroid, which means it's a building block that can make sex hormones, it can make hormones to break sugar down inside of your body, and it also can make hormones that help your body to absorb minerals better. The big concern today in our society is when you have high cholesterol, they feel that it's impacting your heart and it actually can cause heart disease. I'm not gonna totally disagree with that because we see cholesterol levels really, really high. I know you're probably eating too much sugar and too many refined foods that are causing inflammation inside of your body. So let's talk about cholesterol as it could be related to a fireman inside of your body. You know, firemen are very, very important. What do they do? That's right, firemen put out fires. Well, at the beginning of the program, I mentioned to you that cholesterol is not a fat. It's actually an alcohol and it cannot float in water by itself. In other words, it cannot go in blood by itself. It needs a transporter. So if cholesterol would be similar to a fireman and firemen put out fires, how do firemen get to fires? They go on fire trucks. Now I'm gonna explain to you a little nugget. There are two fire trucks inside of the body. There is the LDL fire truck that takes the firemen to the fire, and there's the HDL fire truck that takes the firemen back to the fire house. We think of the LDL as the bad guy. LDL is not the bad guy. The LDL cholesterol is taking firemen to the fire. So let's just say that you're beneath a lot of stress. I'm gonna flip your switch here a little bit. Cholesterol is used in your body not only to put out fires, but cholesterol is used in your body to make cortisone. Cortisone takes away inflammation. So the cholesterol in your body is actually the precursor or the building block to make the cortisone, which puts the fire out. So all of a sudden, you have this pain and inflammation inside of your body. Your body's using all the cortisone, all the firefighters. So it says to the brain, brain, I need more cortisone. So what does the brain do? It makes cholesterol. First, you're gonna have cholesterol and it's gonna make two other hormones, two big words I'm gonna give to you right now. One is called pregnenolone, big word, isn't it? The other one is progesterone. Progesterone becomes cortisone inside of your body when it's needed. So if you go to your doctor, you've been having a lot of pain, you're not feeling good, you're depressed, you just feel lethargic, and he draws your blood and he says to you, whoa, your LDL is so high, we need to give you a medication to lower that, guess what? That's like literally shooting the fireman on the way to the fire. Do you hear what I just said? When they give you certain medications which have bad effects, and one of the most common medication is a statin drug, and a statin drug works by interrupting cholesterol metabolism inside of your liver, well, what happens then is you start to have bad effects. Now listen, this is significant. 
I'll have patients that come into my office that have pain in their body once they start taking statin medications. And do you want to know why? Because when you're taking a statin medication, it's taking the cholesterol out of your body that's used to make cortisone. Do you hear what I just said? Here's the question that nobody ever asks, and I'm going to ask you the same question. What's causing the fire? Think about that. What's causing the fire? See, if we could put the fire out, we wouldn't need all the firemen going to the fire. Well, I have found two or three areas that will increase the fire. Number one is sugar. The average American consumes about 150 pounds of sugar every year. That's a half a teaspoon of sugar every 30 minutes. That's, that's not healthy because the sugar is going to stress that gland called the, called the adrenal gland that makes more cortisone. The second one, and this is going to be really interesting to you, is trans fat or partially hydrogenated oils. You know, about 30 years ago, they're having everybody use margarine. Margarine was made of trans fat or partially hydrogenated oil. They felt vegetable oil did not have animal fat in it and it would not alter your cholesterol. But in essence, the trans fat or partially hydrogenated oils causes inflammation inside of the body because it alters fat metabolism. Trans fat in margarine is so bad that it will raise your LDL, which is considered the bad cholesterol, and lower the HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol. So my suggestion to you is you want to become label savvy. Even if you see a package that says zero grams trans fat on it, if you look over to the nutrition facts, there's always going to be partially hydrogenated oils in it. I don't want to say always, most of the time, because the media know, the manufacturers know, that there's a law in America today that says you can say zero grams trans fat when a product has a half a gram or trans fat or less per serving. Trans fat will raise your cholesterol. So you want to avoid trans fat and sugar as much as you can. And the third item that will raise the cholesterol up is ice cream. Ice cream is like one of the most popular foods in America. And I know that some of you are listening to me right now, Dr. Bob, you can't take away the ice cream. Well, ice cream and sugar and trans fat, just remember this, cause inflammation in the body. And the reason your LDL cholesterol is going up is the LDL fire truck are taking the firemen to the fire. So you may avoid red meat and you might even avoid cheese and your cholesterol is staying the same and maybe even getting a little bit worse. I want you to think about how much sugar you're eating. I have found, are you ready? Eggs are not the bad guy. Inside of egg yolk, there's something called lecithin. Lecithin helps emulsify the cholesterol inside of your body. A couple of items I want to just briefly touch with you about today. A low thyroid gland. I have found from my experience that if your thyroid gland is not functioning optimally, you have a greater chance to have high cholesterol. How do you know if you have a low thyroid gland or not? Do you have cold hands and cold feet? Wide space teeth? Losing the outer hair on your eyebrows? If you have constipation, fatigue, wake up with a morning headache, all body signals of a low thyroid gland. Some of you may be already on thyroid medication. It's been estimated up to 72% of the people in the whole world don't have enough iodine, which impacts the thyroid gland, which could be one of the reasons that your cholesterol will not go down. Let me share a little bit more about what cholesterol does inside of the body. The cholesterol in your skin, the cholesterol in your skin, when sunshine hits it, becomes vitamin D. So in essence, you really do need cholesterol because the cholesterol with sunshine 
helps your body make vitamin D, and vitamin D is very important for calcium absorption from the intestines. So what I want you to understand is that cholesterol is very much needed in your body. I briefly talked about statin medications in the first part of the segment. Statin medications work, as I mentioned to you, by altering the metabolism of cholesterol inside of your liver. The seriousness of the fact is if you are taking cholesterol medication, it can cause liver disease. But what really concerns me is taking the cholesterol out of your body that's used to make sex hormones, pain relieving hormones, and mineral hormones. Let's briefly talk to you about those three items. What I have found, the easiest way to help lower your cholesterol so you don't have these side effects with sexual dysfunction or pain syndromes or your low back going out easy is to eat what I call Dr. Bob's ABCs, a half of red apple every day. Do you know you can lower your cholesterol up to 13% by eating a half of red apple every day? Why a half, Dr. Bob? Because I know someone's thinking that because a whole apple has 22 grams of carbs and a half an apple has 11. And we're really wanting you to watch your carbohydrate consumption because the next item also has some healthy carbs for you and that is, are you ready for this? You can lower your cholesterol 40% by eating a third cup of beets every day. And you're gonna think, oh Dr. Bob, I ate beets. Trust me, it's very easy to make beets and I'm gonna give you my secret recipe. You put the beets in a baking dish. You put balsamic vinegar on them, Celtic sea salt and olive oil. Cover them, bake them in 400 degrees, right, a 400 degrees temperature for an hour or so until fork tender. Put the beets on your salad or put some olive oil on them. Eat up to a third cup of beets every day. And finally, four or five baby carrots or one medium carrot every day if you eat these three items, Dr. Bob's ABCs, you can lower your cholesterol naturally up to 50%. That's a lot. And that's why you'll be able to just say no to all those different medications. You always want to talk to your healthcare provider before you make the decision to go off the medications. But let me recap a little bit of this for you, all right? Minimize or eliminate sugar. If you crave sugar, there is a nutrient that we suggest called chromium. Chromium helps take away the craving for sugar. Now, the next item that you want to do is start becoming label savvy. You want to avoid trans fat as much as you possibly can because trans fat causes inflammation in the body. And I know this might be challenging for you, but if you really have a, a passion for ice cream, why don't you try some grain uh, type of ice creams like rice dream or oat dream, something that does not have necessarily the dairy or the amount of sugar in it. Cholesterol is your friend. It's not good or bad. And I hope this information that I gave you today will allow you to make some wise choices. If your cholesterol is really elevated, you need to sit down and do a diet journal to see exactly how much and what type of inflammatory food that you've been consuming. Thanks for joining me today. Look forward to having you join me once again. I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor.